can swimming pool water get old? Well, I mean, it's not old necessarily. What we might look at from a chemistry perspective is the quantity of total dissolved solids within the water. And what are total dissolved solids? Well, it pretty much, just as it sounds, anything that we've put into the water, which has now dissolved into the water, has increased the dissolved solids level. For example, if we took some salt and we poured it into your pool and then that salt dissolved into the water, measurably we have increased the total dissolved solid level in your pool. So what's a good level to have? What's a problematic level? Well, there's a couple of different schools of thought about this, but typically speaking about 2000 to 2500 parts per million total dissolved solids is the upper end of what's acceptable. Beyond this level, the pool becomes unmanageable. The chemical treatments aren't effective like they used to be. The water looks dull and listless, and you're supposed to drain or dilute, partially drain and refill with a fresh water source with a lower level of total dissolved solids. So here's where the train comes off the rails. What if you have a salt water pool? First of all, whatever your TDS level is, we'll, we'll, we'll pick a number like 700. That's what your, out of your tap is. It's 700 parts, parts per million total dissolved solids. Okay, so now we add 3,000 parts per million of salt to the pool. So now your TDS level in theory is 3,700 parts per million. But just a minute ago, I said like 2,000, 2,500, that's the maximum. So what's the deal with saltwater pools? Well, that's part of the problem with saltwater pools. It's not necessarily a problem. It's just it, it makes you deviate from the original uh, chemistry information, which might apply to swimming pools. If you have a saltwater pool, obviously you can't drain and refill it when you reach 2,000 parts per million of total dissolved solids because you need 3,000 parts per million of salt just for your salt chlorinator to operate. And so that's kind of the deal with water in swimming pools and how it gets old. The older your water is, the more likely you have a high level of total dissolved solids. And this is something you can measure with a water test. In areas with seasonal swimming pools, we often partially drain and refill as part of the closing and winterizing process. So in theory, those pools experience more fresh water intake than a pool that operates 24-7, 365 in Arizona or some area, other, other area of the world, that pool is going to be a little bit different. You could end up with water in that pool that, I mean, it's never been replaced essentially. And that's the thing, you know, if you have salt in the pool, you might have a lot of evaporation in Arizona, but that salt's not going anywhere. It stays in the water. So you even add fresh water to it, that salt remains the same. It evaporates down, the salt just kind of concentrates, you refill with fresh water, that salt level has never gone, gone down throughout this process. So that's how you can end up with old swimming pool water, is you can have an area where you don't often drain and refill with fresh water, and you just have a pool that's three years old, five years old, it's never been drained and refilled. In those situations, I recommend that you do. So if you had a saltwater pool and you want to figure out how do I know when to drain and refill, non-salt water, we already know. You hit 2,000 to 2,500 parts per million TDS, partially drain and refill lower that number. With a saltwater pool, what I recommend is whatever your TDS level is, once you've started, once you've added the salt, take your measurement, whatever your starting number is, when you're about 1,000 to 1,500 parts per million above that, that indicates that your water is old and it's time to replace it. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.